Hey guys, welcome back to the show. By the way, if you're a fan and you'd like to support the show, you can do so on Patreon. Patreon supporters do get early access to the videos, so you'll get to see them first. So if you're interested in that, the link is in the description. And on this episode of the show, I'm going to be talking about another one of those movies that gets requested time and time again. It's Chopping Mall. Now, I'm going to start off by saying that this is a really fun movie, but... I am a little disappointed because I feel that this poster, even though it's really cool, is a little misleading. So we have this kind of mutant robotic hand here with wires coming out of it, holding on to a bag full of body parts. Combine that with the fact that the movie is called Chopping Mall and the tagline, where shopping costs you an arm and a leg. And one might expect to see a movie where body parts are being chopped off, but no. There is no chopping, not even close. In fact, there's not even a single bladed weapon that could be used for chopping in this movie. Now there is another poster for the movie, but it's basically the same thing. Here the hand looks more robotic, but even still, this hand never appears in the movie. A more accurate title for the film would be the original release title, Killbots, because that's really what happens in the movie. A bunch of robots going around killing people. So these killer robots are supposed to be the new security for the mall after hours. They use all sorts of different technology to identify intruders and subdue them with tasers and tranquilizers and then call the police. And there's also a new system in place that closes every entrance and exit with these giant steel doors. Which makes me think, wouldn't it just be easier and more cost effective to just hire security guards. I mean, apparently you have to hire somebody to run the robot control room anyways, but then if they did that, they wouldn't have a movie and then I wouldn't have this show. So, uh... Protectors will make Park Plaza the safest mall in the state. Trust me, absolutely nothing can go wrong. And you know what that means at least one thing will go wrong. Wouldn't it be interesting if we had a horror movie where nothing went wrong? You know? So, oh, what was that sound? Oh, it's just a cat. That would be the horror movie of life. You know? You, uh, you work really hard and you hope that things are gonna happen and then nothing happens. And you're just kind of like, oh, that's, sucks. Now I like this opening credit sequence because it really establishes the scale of the mall and what a normal day is like. Lots of people shopping, doing a really bad job at stealing stuff, aggressively making out because being around the general public is such a turn on. And for those of you who don't know, the mall was a big thing back in the 80s. I mean they covered this in season three of Stranger Things. I don't know, I was too young to remember but in the 80s Apparently the malls were just, you know, a huge hangout for people with all this stuff to do. And it makes sense when you think about it. Because this was a time before, you know, it, the internet, online gaming, online shopping, Amazon, a global pandemic. I like how this sequence really tries to capture all the variety that the mall has to offer and just turns into a comedy of errors. I mean, this lady makes it through a gauntlet of people almost bumping into her and spilling all this stuff only to get to her table and pretty much throw the tray over everybody. And this guy has got to be the biggest loser of all time. I don't even know how this is possible. Oh, I'm sorry, did the beautiful women distract you from standing still? How can you honestly trip and fall with all of this stuff on an escalator? All you have to do is not move. It does the climbing for you. It's the most non-physical form of getting somewhere. Just stand, stand on this thing and it will move so that you don't have to. And you couldn't even manage that. So late that night, there's a lightning storm, which in pretty much any sci-fi movie, if you have robots and lightning, it's gonna turn them evil. It's like an unwritten rule. And of course, the guy who's supposed to be looking over the whole robot operation is looking at porn which means he has to die. That's like another unwritten rule of horror movies. And you know, you feel bad for the guy because this is like, th th this porn is like, you know, it's magazine porn. 
you're limited in the amount. If you think about it, all these unwritten rules in horror movies are almost like, it's almost like the modern uh, reefer madness, you know? Don't do any of this stuff or you're gonna get killed by somebody with a, a mask or uh, <laughs> some kind of par paranormal entity is gonna kill you because uh, you had sex, how dare you? Explore your sexuality. How dare you experiment with soft drugs and alcohol? I mean, what do you, you, what do you teenagers think you are? Human? So meanwhile, in the furniture store, we have Mike, Greg, and Ferdy. And they're all planning to have a party with their girlfriends in the store after hours because, uh, well, I have to say that's actually not a bad idea. It's a pretty good idea as long as nothing goes wrong, which it totally will. A lot of these people will suffer horrific deaths and those who don't will spend the rest of their lives haunted by what happened and completely unable to go into a mall ever again without having traumatic flashbacks. And that's why you never get a job at the mall. Hey, I'm looking to buy a recliner. Maybe a lamp too. I don't know, I'm feeling kind of crazy. <laughs> also, I already hate Mike and not just because he's kind of a douchey meathead, but because he's one of those open mouth gum chewers, and those of you who have seen my Fantastic Four video know how I feel about those. <laughs> we also have Rick and Linda who have their own car repair service and they're going to join the party too. And what a party it is. I mean, just look at this. Doesn't all this furniture just want to make you cut loose? So Susie wants to bring her friend Allison because she wants to hook her up with Ferdy. Hi. 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 You guys are fucking weird. I'm going home. Hi. So the party eventually turns into, I guess, having sex in front of each other. You smell like pepperoni. Well, that's the way you feel. Wait a minute. What? I like pepperoni. <laughs> oh. In that case. <laughs> ah, yes, the pepperoni song. Only sung by those caught under the lustful spell of the furniture store salesman. So like I said, they all start banging each other while Allison and Ferdy watch Attack of the Crab Monsters and follow the unwritten rules of the horror movie. Abstain from sex and you'll probably survive. So Leslie convinces Mike to go get her some cigarettes from the vending machine. Little does he know he's about to pay for his obnoxious gum chewing crimes. Yeah. I know Jamal there haven't been any messages for you. Wait, what? What just happened there? The payphone rings for some reason. He answers it and says, no, Jamal, there's no messages for you. Well, who the hell is Jamal? And why is he calling a payphone? Anyways, one of the kill bots shows up and sticks him with a tranquilizer dart and then uses its claw to cut his throat. Eventually, Leslie goes looking for him and finds him dead on the ground. But here's the thing, if you're an actor and you have to play dead, uh, part of that would be not moving. Anyways, this part is awesome because suddenly we find out that the robots have lasers that they can shoot at people. Pretty powerful lasers, I might add. See, I have to admit, if that was me in that situation, that's exactly how I'd want to go, for two reasons. Number one, it would be quick and painless. And number two, you get to put on a show for everybody who's watching. So the robots go into the furniture store and just start shooting everything up, trying to kill everyone. Here's the thing, I mentioned this in my last video. Because of the way that this year has gone, I'm gonna start trying to look on the bright side of things more often, you know, be more positive. So in this situation, uh, on the bright side, at least you don't have to worry about cleaning up after the party. You just have to worry about not getting your head blown off by these stupid robots. So now the mall is officially closed, which means that they're sealed inside this death trap until the giant steel doors open at 6 a.m. Then the girls decide to crawl through the air duct to the parking level and escape, 
But they better hurry because the robots are about to get in their hiding spot by... Uh, I don't know what this is. Is this plastic explosive? Why would these things have that? But then again, why would they also have lasers that can vaporize your face? So the robots set the charges and get in and the guys are able to run out through another door. Meanwhile, the girls are crawling through the vents until Susie starts complaining that it's too hot. Oh, I'm sorry, Susie. Would you rather go back to being hunted by the psycho robots who shoot darts and electricity and lasers and explosives? So the guys load up with guns and for some reason, don't take any cover as the robot is shooting back at them. I mean, you've seen what these lasers can do. Maybe don't just stand there completely stationary. I mean, if you're on the escalator, you'd be fine, but in this situation, this is the time to duck, dodge, dive, and dodge. <laughs> so Susie convinces the girls to get out of the vent and help the guys, so they stock up on some gasoline cans. Allison finds a flare. Gee, something tells me this is gonna come in handy in a crucial moment later on in the movie. So they throw one of the canisters at the robot, and you could probably guess what happens. It just drives right through the fire. Honestly, what were you really expecting to happen? The robot just to stop in its tracks like, oh, wow, that's, that's hot. <laughs> I wasn't expecting this. The whole thing is made of metal. It's running on a tread. You'd have a better chance at stopping this thing by pushing it over with a stick. So they start running away, but the robot shoots Susie in the back of the leg. Well, I guess that means she's completely unable to move at all now. See, a lot of people don't know this. This is what happens when one leg gets injured. Uh, you're completely unable to move your other extremities to try and drag your body to safety. It's just, it's not gonna happen. Of course, after a while, the robot is just like, wow, easy kill, and shoots the gasoline, setting Susie on fire, and look, wow, she's somehow able to move again. So they come up with a plan to trap a robot in the elevator, shoot some propane tanks to cut the wire and destroy it that way, even though blowing it up with the propane tank and shooting it multiple times did nothing. It's amazing how you can predict what's gonna happen just based on thinking about what the opposite of the dialogue would be. Come on, guys, the coast is clear! So when Greg says the coast is clear, what is really gonna happen is that a robot is gonna come out of nowhere swing its arm at him and cause him to fly up into the sky and over the railing and die. Then they set up mannequins so that the robots won't know who to shoot at, but here's the real genius part. They unleash a mirror, which as we all know, will deflect these lasers right back at the robot. That's just simple science, folks. So the robot is going crazy, shooting all over the place. And of course, this seems like the perfect time for Linda to stop running. And of course, she gets shot because that's what happens when you're dumb. Well, Rick, these things have killed your friends and now your wife. You know what to do. It's that time. It's time to stop fooling around and destroy this thing by um, getting on this little cart and driving into it, which of course kills him and causes the robot to explode. So to recap, Revolvers, shotguns, assault rifles, explosions, do nothing to these things, but trapping one in an elevator and letting it plummet three floors, as well as just kind of bumping into one with this little cart is enough to destroy them. And there's one more robot left, so what the hell, Ferdy? You might as well drop the revolver and try to find a banana peel to get it to slip on, because as we've seen so far, these things are only destroyed by Methods used in cartoons. Allison and Ferdy decide to split up and go back through the hallways of the mall. <laughs> Wait, what is that? I have scrubbed through this footage frame by frame and I still have no idea what this thing is or why it's just swinging from the ceiling. Quick, we need something to pop out in this scene and give a jump scare. Well, all we got are some sticks and some string. Well, set it up. Ah, oh, of course. It's just one of those closets filled with random scrap metal pipes and automotive parts. Any mall has at least half a dozen of those. Anyways, Ferdy manages to shoot the robot and disable the laser, but then decides to just 
throw a fire extinguisher at it. And quite frankly, I can't blame him. I mean, with the way this movie has gone, I'm actually surprised the fire extinguisher didn't activate some kind of self-destruct mode on the robot. But like every person in this movie, Ferdy just stands there and doesn't take cover as the robot fires back at him. Well, that's not a good sign. Looks like Ferdy is dead. So Allison figures the best thing to do is hide in a pet store behind the pet food. Okay, who set up this pet store? It's like, uh, hey Joe, uh, that order of snakes and tarantulas just came in. Oh, okay, just, uh, just put them in those glass cases I have sitting precariously on top of that cat perch. Yeah, oh, and when you're done, uh, make sure they're as unbalanced and unsecure as possible. So Allison then plummets from the third floor, but luckily some luggage breaks her fall. But it looks like she's injured her leg. Oh well, I guess she's a goner too. But wait, it seems as if Allison is defying modern medical science as we know it and is somehow able to still move across the ground with an injured leg. And that's when Allison remembers the flare she has tucked between her breasts. She pours the paint on the floor, tricks the robot into getting stuck in it, and lights the fuse of what I can only assume will be a lengthy battle between the owner of that paint store and their insurance. But here's the bright side to everything. It turns out that Ferdy is okay. I mean, sure, that's a lot of blood, and he most likely has a crack in his skull, but at least it's not as big as Leslie's. And that's honestly the end of the movie. So during the production of this movie, it was called Robots, and then it was Killbots, but it still wasn't doing well at the box office. So apparently a janitor suggested that they change the name to Chopping Mall, and once they did that, it started doing better. Can't help but wonder if that janitor ever received anything for the suggestion that eventually helped the movie sell. Probably not. And also, apparently in 2011, there were plans to remake this movie, but here we are in 2020 and nothing's going on, so don't hold your breath. As I said in the beginning, this is definitely a fun movie, and for what it is, it's pretty decently made, but it's definitely weird, and that's the most important part. So as usual, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you all next time.